Now look at the 23rd question. The 23rd question says that BP is nothing but the peak value of the sinusoidal flux density. Now he says that there is some rotating electrical machine and in that every rotating electrical machine has got its own air gap. And in that air gap, the flux density is distributed sinusoidal. Okay. And uh, this is the maximum value of that sinusoidal flux wave density. And uh, L is the length of the armature core. And he has given that D is the diameter of the armature core. And P is the number of poles. Then he has given some six formulas. Out of those six formulas, you have to identify which is the right formula and which is the wrong formula. So some students might be getting uh, confusion or they might find difficulty how do we visualize these things which are there. See generally every rotating electrical machine let us say we will take a case of a DC machine only. We will take a case of a DC machine. So in a DC machine how the DC machine is uh, constructed you will be having a rotor or armature at the center and above this rotor only you will be having these poles and all this setup isn't it. Now where is the air gap? This, this region isn't it this region entirely is the air gap this region is the air gap now now suppose this is the armature the diameter armature is given like this okay this is the diameter of the armature let us say this is the diameter of the armature is d now what is the length of the armature length of the armature is nothing but see this is a cylindrical object not a 2d object isn't it it's not just a circle it is a cylinder so the length of the cylinder itself is the length of the armature core what he is referring to here okay and the number of poles and flux density peak value of the flux density in the air gap peak value of the flux density in the air gap so one point to be noted here is in the question he mentioned that the waveform of the flux density is in which shape he says that the waveform is how sinusoidal it is sinusoidal waveform so okay sir now you are talking about a dc machine and uh, now you are telling that the waveform according to the question is sinusoidal. Is it so? Is a flux density waveform in a DC machine a sinusoidal? Absolutely not. In a DC machine, in DC machine, the flux density is a flat top or a trapezoidal waveform. Trapezoidal or flat top in a DC machine. Then how come it is sinusoidal? Sinusoidal is there in synchronous machines or in alternators you can say. But sometimes it would be the interest of the examiner that he will ask you to assume that a DC machine is assumed to have a sinusoidal flux density but that is not the case. In fact DC machine flux density waveform is purely trapezoidal or a flat topped waveform and for an alternator definitely you should be having only a sinusoidal waveform because in synchronous machines in AC machines quality is more important than quantity. So how do you define quality of a waveform? If a waveform is very close to a sinusoidal waveform then you say high quality waveform. And uh, what do you mean by quantity of a waveform? Average value of a waveform. When you compare a trapezoidal or a flat top, trapezoidal or flat top is nothing but you can assume it almost equivalent to a rectangular or a square wave. Isn't it? So if you look at the average value of a rectangular or a square wave, what would be the average value equal to the maximum value? But what would be the average value of a sinusoidal waveform? Some 0.5 times of, isn't it? 0.537 something times of the maximum value. That means the average value of sinusoidal will be less. That is quantity contained in a sinusoidal waveform is less. The quantity contained here is more. So here it is not a high quality waveform. It is uh, highly dominant with harmonics. That is the reason why it is a flat top, isn't it? So in a DC machine quantity is important, in AC machines quality is important therefore flux density must be sinusoidal. Okay anyhow if it is a sinusoidal both of them are rotating machines only then we will talk about the sinusoidal case only. Now you are supposed to find out what is the you can look at the first statement says that flux per pole flux per pole. So what is the flux per pole? Flux per pole is basically an average quantity. This point you have to keep in mind flux per pole is an average quantity average quantity. Now, in order to find out what is the average flux per pole, what we can uh, uh, do? So, you know the what is the flux density. So, generally what is flux density means flux per area, isn't it? So, if you want to find out what is the flux per pole, then find out what is the average flux density, okay, average flux density and multiply into area per pole. What is the area per pole multiplied by? Average flux density will give you average flux per pole. As simple as that. 
Now he says that the flux density is a sinusoidal waveform with BP as the peak value. For any sinusoidal waveform, what would be the average value? So B average would be equal to simply 2 by pi BP. This is the average value of any sinusoidal waveform, right? Okay, now you got what is the B average value. Now I have to find out what is the total area of the area. Total area of the area divided by number of poles, you will get the area per pole, isn't it? So, what is the total area? So, total area is nothing but you see, total area is around this total circle. Now, what is the length of this total circle? That is nothing but the perimeter of the armature. So, what is the perimeter of the armature? D is the diameter. So, pi D would be the perimeter. So, the total perimeter would be pi D and multiplied by length would give you the total area around this armature core, isn't it? So, the area would be how much? Area would be equal to pi D into L, isn't it? Pi D L. So, you can easily find out what is the flux per pole. So, flux per pole would be equal to average flux density into area per pole. So, 2 by pi into BP into area per pole. So, total area by number of poles P. So, pi pi get cancelled out here. Then finally, you are left out with what quantity? Flux per pole is equal to 2 by P maximum flux density into D into L. Diameter of the armature core into length of the armature core. So, the first statement is correct. The first formula which is given in the question is the correct one. Now, second question he says that average flux density, average flux density. See, average flux density is already you obtained here. So, this is the second statement. This is also correct. Okay. This is the first statement that you got. Okay. Next, uh, if you look at the third statement, uh, that is the same version of the first one only, but the only difference is it is given 4 by P. So, that cannot be the case. So, 4 by P will come when you are taking radius in place of diameter, radius of the armature core. Simply, two, uh, D is equal to what? 2 times of the radius, isn't it? So, if I want to write in terms of radius, D will become 2 times of R. So, 2 into 2 becomes 4, 4 by P, maximum flux density, radius into length of the armature core. That's it. So, third one is also wrong. Fourth one uh, defines the average value. That is also wrong. Now, you look at the fifth one, fifth statement. He says that B average is equal to P pi into pi D L. Let us just investigate this one. So, B average is equal to P into flux by pi D L. Okay. Now, what is pi D L? Pi D L is nothing but the total area of the air gap. Isn't it? Pi D L is the total area of the air gap. Now, P into phi. What is this phi? Phi is nothing but average flux per pole and into poles. That means total air gap flux. Isn't it? So, this P into phi is total, total air gap flux divided by what is this? Total air gap area. So, total air gap flux by total air gap area would give you the average flux density, isn't it? Total average, uh, average flux density, obviously. So, option or the fifth statement is also correct statement and sixth one is the wrong one. So, here option A would be the right answer. 1, 2, 5. These uh, three formulas are the correct ones. Okay.